guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a get ready with me, or honestly, it's just I'm playing with makeup. I just wanted to sit down and play with makeup and do something fun. I saw this beautiful Instagram post. It was a Instagram tutorial by Belle Jordan. I will link her down below. Her look 100% inspired this look. Mine's not exactly like hers, but I got my idea completely from her and I want to give her full credit for this makeup look. I will link her down below. Again, her name is Belle Jordan and she is so unbelievably stunning. I'm pretty sure she's not human. Like, oh my god, this girl is so beautiful. And the makeup she does is gorgeous. I really recommend you guys check her out on Instagram if you're not already. But yeah, I saw this lime green look she did. I was super inspired today and I wanted to sit down and try to recreate it. So mine's not exactly like hers. I didn't have all the same products, but I did the best that I could. And I actually really like how it turned out. I also need to vent and get a lot off my chest today. I'm talking about why I canceled my honeymoon, touching a bit on Jaclyn Hill, touching on a fight I'm having with a loke. This video is like a mess. So just like sit down, relax, hang out with me. If you need to vent to me, use that comment section, girl. Leave me your comments. Leave me your frustrations. Let's just let it all out here so we can have the best weekend. And like sometimes it just feels good to get this shit off your chest. And I'm doing that to you guys today. I'm basically using you as a soundboard and I'm just venting onto you. So I'm sorry if you're not in the mood for a vent, I would get out now. But yeah, if you guys want to hang out with me, see how I did this makeup look, just keep watching. So today I want to do a little neon look. I was actually really inspired, like completely inspired by this artist on Instagram. You guys probably know her, Belle Jordan. She's amazing. I'm going to link her down below. She posted this video. It's actually a few posts old. She posted it June 1st. It was in my saved file right here. Beautiful lime green look and I was so inspired by it. So I wanted to do something like it today. I don't think I could do it as good as her. So I don't think it'll look exactly like it, like whatsoever. If you want to see the real deal, go check out her Instagram. Again, I will link it down below. June 1st is when she posted the video, so definitely go check that out and like, wow girl, you are amazing. I know a lot of you probably already saw my tutorial and live swatches of the ColourPop California Love Palette, but I wanted to use it again so bad because I think it's perfect for this look. I also have the new Huda Beauty Neon Palettes that I really wanted to use. I'm wearing my neon sweater. I am just like good to go. So to start off this look, I'm actually gonna take a, let's take a little Laguna. This is my E40 Sigma brush, and I'm just gonna use this as my transition tone. I like was in such a good mood when I woke up today you guys and I'm in a terrible mood now <laughs> I'll be honest with you I'm so annoyed so let's just go down the rabbit hole of what's pissing me off today does that sound good good because I need to like vent to like my girls and my guys out there watching this I, I need you right now so the first thing I want to talk about is why I canceled my honeymoon I am so upset but I can't be selfish because there's like <laughs> I'm still alive so I can't be upset but I'm upset because I was just so excited about our honeymoon so Loke and I were gonna go to Punta Cana for our honeymoon and I'm sure you've seen a lot of the headlines recently of people dying in these resorts. We had picked the most beautiful resort that I was so excited to visit. So excited. I mean we had been looking for months and I found this place that was just amazing and I was so excited. Loke and I actually have never taken a trip together in our almost 11 years of dating. The only time we've actually ever traveled together before is if I'm going to a beauty event somewhere or if I'm flying out for an event and they let me bring him. That's the only time we've ever traveled together. In fact, I think maybe it was only like two, two or three times. So, and like, you know, it's a honeymoon. You're so excited. So anyway, I booked the flights literally probably a week before all this news started coming out. I booked the flights, booked the resort, was so excited. And you know, when you book a trip, like you go online and you read the reviews and you watch YouTube videos, or at least that's what I do or what I did. And so I just fallen so in love with this place and I was so excited. And then come to find out people are unfortunately dying over there. I don't know what the hell from from, but at these resorts and I was just like oh my god even talking about it right now I'm like slightly sick to my stomach because I was like I don't want to die and of course you know there might be a one in a thousand chance that we would actually die there but what is it like now 10 or 11 Americans have died in Punta Cana over the past few months that's kind of crazy and just in their resort rooms not even like in extreme water activities or anything like that or shark bites or anything so after a long discussion with Alok we decided to cancel and book somewhere else. Now we're going to Cancun, which I am super excited about. And special thank you to everyone who helped me find a new uh, location. I'm not saying where we're going yet. I'm weird about like keeping details private that are like mine and a Like not all details because I'm about to tell you guys why he pissed me off today. <laughs> but like thanks to Joe with 
our wedding and stuff, I just want to like keep under wraps until it's happening. I don't know why. Maybe I'm nervous. I don't know. Maybe I'm afraid like if I talk about it, like I did my last one, like this sort of thing will happen again and I'll have to cancel. By the way, canceling was a nightmare. I had to pay so much money just to even get flight ticket voucher credits. Like they wouldn't even just give me a voucher. I had to pay like $400 to be able to have a voucher for the flights that I had booked that I had to cancel. Like that's insane. Not to mention the resort fees and it was just so stressful. So I think now I'm just like really nervous to even like say where we're going. I'm taking just a dry clean blending brush and running that through. But anyway, we finally booked our honeymoon and then last night, so I booked it uh, maybe two, three days ago and I did it through Expedia, the flights anyway, not the uh, resort reservation. Because I had the voucher, I had to go through Expedia and I had a call to book the new flights. So I booked the new flights. There was a price difference of like $200 that I was gonna have to pay for. So I was like, yeah, definitely like throw it on my debit, fine, whatever. I just wanna get this over with. So we book it, we book the flights, everything's fine. I noticed the $200 charge on my card and I'm like, great. And the guy on the phone was like, by the way, it might take 24 hours for your flight reservation to show up on Expedia. So I was like, okay, no problem. Now it's like three days later. And last night I was like, wow, I haven't gotten our flight information yet. Like we don't have any confirmation or any details. So I was like, let me give them a call. Cause now I'm super nervous. I give them a call. The guy on the phone's like, you don't have any flight reservations. You don't have this, you don't have that. And I was like, yes I do because I used my vouchers and we booked it and I know it went through because I got the $200 charge on my debit card for the you know extra amount of money that we had to pay that the voucher wouldn't cover. He was like, no, you're gonna have to call your bank because that's not on our end. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yes, it is. It's the exact dollar amount that the flight was extra, you know? Like, I know that's what it is. And it says Expedia slash American Airlines on it. Like, I'm like, this, it, it's booked, I swear. He's like, no, 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 no. He's trying to rush me off the phone, you guys. And I'm like in tears because I'm like, no, I'm gonna jump into the shade Gold Rush. What really had upset me was I was like, okay, maybe the flight didn't go through. Like, let's just play with this idea. I was like, can you look up our flight voucher and see if it's been used? Like, you know, I have the flight voucher code. So if we're following your argument here and it hasn't been used, then that money should still be like attached to the voucher. So he looks it up and he was like, no, you don't have anything left on your voucher code. You use that. And I was like, I know I used it. I used it on this flight that you can't find. Oh my God. So anyway, after a really, really long, like 45 minute conversation with this man who was so rude to me, he finally just like pushed me off to a supervisor because I was like not willing to hang up on the phone and they can't hang up on you. And I was like, no, I'm not getting off the phone until you find my flights. Like this is ridiculous. So he finally sent me to a supervisor and she, I mean, bless this woman's soul. I was praising her. I was crying. I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. She actually found our flights. They were there. I don't know why this guy couldn't find them because she found them in like maybe 30 seconds. She just pulled it right up. So I don't know what his issue was and why he couldn't find our flights, but he couldn't find them. So anyway, I finally have our flight confirmation and our ticket number and all that good jazz and the resort is booked. And so I'm glad that's over. Still super bummed. We couldn't go to Punta Cana. I've never been and our resort just looked amazing. But the new one that we're doing looks really great and actually super fun. The last one I did was kind of more like luxury and it didn't have many activities. It was kind of just about like lounging. So I'm glad the one I booked has a ton of activities and hopefully it should be fun. Now I wanna go into this brown shade here. Don't you hate when like you send someone like the longest rant, like why you're mad at them and they just don't respond for like an hour? I'm going to focus this in our outer V and get that dimension in there. So now let me tell you why I'm mad at Alok today. <laughs> it's not that I'm mad, I am just very highly annoyed because people are rude. This was not his intention, I know it was not because he's just not this type, he's just, being cute and I know he's just excited for the wedding and whatever, whatever, whatever. So I'm already giving away more details than I want to about our wedding. You guys know I've not even given out the date or anything like that because I just want everything to be a surprise. I think that's fun. What I will tell you is I desperately want Alok to wear a skinny black tie. I know this is the stupidest thing ever, you guys. I know. Let me just keep going. I really want him to wear a skinny black tie. He was thinking maybe he could wear a bow tie. I desperately do not want him to wear a bow tie. I know it doesn't matter in the scheme of things. That's everyone's first comment. You know, on the wedding day, you won't even notice. You won't even care. I know, I get it. It's not about what we're wearing. It's about that we're spending the rest of our lives together. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. However, I still, it's just, I've always envisioned him in this skinny black tie and a gorgeous black tux. And let's just say his idea was much different. For example, for his like, you know, 
jacket, he wanted something extremely loud, is what I'll say. Like a patterned one. No, <laughs> no, because honestly, my dress is a little loud. It's just not how I envisioned it. And I just want him to look timeless. I don't want him to look goofy. And the jacket he wanted and the bow tie, it's just, it's so goofy. So we compromised, right? I told him if he, just for the photos and for the ceremony, if he would wear the plain black jacket and the black skinny tie for the reception, he can wear whatever the hell he wants. It can be a lime green jacket. I won't care. Just for the photos though and for the ceremony, with like the beautiful flowers and colors I've designed and the beautiful dress like I just want a timeless photo I want it so bad so you know that was our compromise if he just wears the black suit to the ceremony he can have whatever the hell he wants at the reception I don't care he can show up with a t-shirt tuxedo for all I give a hoot I don't just for the photos I want the black suit so regardless this morning I wake up to a post he had posted on Facebook saying can't decide between a black skinny tie or a bow tie for the wedding. I'm like, what do you mean we can't decide? We've just had this discussion. So I commented and I was like, bow tie? Like, no, we've talked about this. We compromised. You can't go back on our compromise now. And again, I know it doesn't matter. I know I'm gonna get this comment a thousand times over. It won't matter. You won't remember what he's wearing. I get it, but I will. You guys don't know me, I will. To this day, I complain about my prom shoes, okay? You don't understand me. It'll bug me till I die, especially if it's my wedding photos. So I commented and I I was like, no, no bow tie. We've been over this. Like, end of story. We'll talk about this when you get home. My problem is, though, everyone he's Facebook friends with, because of his stupid post, feels the right to tell me why a black tie would look bad, why skinny ties look bad. I feel like I've been attacked on Facebook all day about our own wedding from his friends and people he knows saying like, oh, bow tie all the way. Ties are so dead. And I'm like, no, ties are never dead. Ties are timeless. You know, if you wanna be a little hipster with your little bow tie, that's fine. And I actually think they look really nice on people. It's just what I've always envisioned is a low in a nice skinny black tie, a tight little suit because he's super, super thin. And I think it would just look amazing. And it's just what I want. He doesn't care either way, by the way. We were texting during this and he was like, I'm obviously wearing a skinny black tie. I didn't realize this would get so out of hand. But now you guys, it's so out of hand where it's actually kind of starting to hurt my feelings. Someone said that my idea or my vision is garbage. And I just think that's really offensive to say to a bride about her husband and what she wants him to wear. It's just like, none of your opinions matter. Why are you even still commenting? I commented a thousand times saying, all of your opinions are invalid. You are wasting your time. And then they're like getting aggressive with me saying my idea is trash and garbage. And now Alok's gonna look bad because I want him in a skinny black tie. First of all, Alok could never look bad in anything. That's besides the point. But like, who are you to tell me what Alok should wear? I'm just so annoyed that he even got us in this situation where people won't shut up about it. They honestly should all form a little bow tie fan club. It's ridiculous. I don't know. I'm just annoyed that it's none of their business, really. They shouldn't even have opinions. I know how dumb I sound right now being so upset about the situation, but I am. If you guys could see these comments, I mean, it's so rude. Like, the fact that someone literally told me that my idea is trash and I'm gonna make a local look bad, it's just, like, really hurtful. It's none of your freaking business. Not to mention, the majority of these people aren't even invited to the wedding. It's like, shut up. I'm so mad at a look right now. I'm so mad at a look right now. Because also, he hasn't like defended me all day on the post. He's just like laughing at every post. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't know. It just hurt my feelings. I know I sound stupid, but I can sound stupid about my wedding. This is really pretty. You know, I did my part. I compromised. He can wear whatever dumb thing he wants to wear to the reception. I don't care. But like all these opinions are unneeded. And I'll also say, wow, I can't believe I'm telling you guys all this stuff. I'm like very vulnerable right now. Uh, there was a girl who commented that while Alok and I were dating, she was like trying to creep in on him and we all worked together and that really upset me. She would like invite him over and he would never go. He would show me the text message. I mean, we lived together and I'd be like, what the fuck is she doing? So the fact that like she's commenting and she's like, sorry, Shay, bow tie it is. I'm like, you. Bow tie it is not, bitch. Oh my god, you guys, I am so heated right now. Don't you love these colors? They are gorgeous. Someone literally commented, we can just blame Shay when a look looks like garbage on his wedding day. Who would ever say that? Who are these psychopaths? I just hate people and opinions. Oh my god. Okay, now let's go into the shade mission. Okay, that felt really good to get off my chest. Please don't judge me because I cannot take any more judgment right now. I'm so annoyed. And we're just gonna deepen this up even more. And pack that on the outer corner. 
Let's get to the next reason why I'm super annoyed. And this one I never wanted to talk about again as long as I lived because I had gotten it all out in my first video, I thought. But now, like, things are getting weirder and worse. And for the life of me, I can't understand why she's dead silent right now. Please don't take this as me trying to, like, jump on her and jump on the Jaclyn Hill hate wagon. That's not it. I think the majority of my frustration comes from the fact of just how she's handling this, or lack thereof, I suppose. So today or yesterday, I'm not sure when, Persa Pukas showed a piece of metal in her lipstick. This girl is not, you know, into drama. She was not looking for attention. In my opinion, this is a respectable YouTuber who is just honest. And let me tell you, it is not easy getting on camera. I imagine, especially when you're a really big YouTuber and saying like, there's something wrong with Jaclyn Hill's makeup line. It's not easy. My frustration is, where is she? All she's done I'm taking a little on the inner corner too now. All she's done was put out that video that was like highly aggressive and kind of felt like we were being yelled at. Other than that, she's been dead silent. I understand this is hard, but I feel like the longer she's silent, the weirder and rougher this is going to get. They shouldn't be for sale anymore. The more you're letting people buy these and get them and look at them, the bigger the problem's gonna get. I mean, I just don't understand why they've not been recalled. That's like my main issue here. I'm sad for her. You know, it sucks that this turned out to be such a really, really, really bad launch. Who would have ever thought this makeup line we were waiting for for like seven plus years would turn out so horrendously? And it's not even just because people want Jaclyn Hill to fail. It's literally because these lipsticks are horrible and there's foreign objects in them. I don't know how this ever made it to production and to the consumers. There's, I stand by what I said in my big Jaclyn Hill video where I called her a liar. I still believe she's a liar. I still believe she 100% knew there are weird things going on with these lipsticks. And I honestly 100% think she thought we wouldn't notice. I think maybe she'd assume some would notice and they would just basically get attacked for accusing Jaclyn Hill of having crappy lipsticks. I think she could, I feel like she thought she could count on her popularity and people wanting these lipsticks so bad to like make them overlook the problem is what I feel like. I'm going to wet my brush. At this point in time, I'm just like, girl, what are you doing? I'm gonna take Kahuna with our damp brush and I'm gonna pop this in the center of the eye. I just, yeah, I think I'm just so annoyed at how she's handling this. I honestly feel like she's making it worse for herself. I mean, she's been dead silent since that video and the internet's just running amok and more and more and more images and videos keep coming out of what's going on with these lipsticks. I mean, you have like amazing beauty scientists, I don't even know what they're called, <laughs> running lab tests on your lipsticks. Where are you? Like, where are you? And why have these not been recalled? Are they really sticking to their guns that intensely? Even though there's so much photo evidence of these lipsticks being just absolutely absurd and weird? One thing I regret about my video is I didn't talk about the hair at all. I'm glad I'm actually talking about this now because I wanted to address this. The reason why I didn't talk about the hair, and this is super embarrassing, but I have a fluffy chair. I sit, let me see if I can pull a hair out. I sit in a white fluffy chair. I honest to God thought my chair was like, I don't know because it's never been an issue with any other lipstick. So I don't know why I didn't realize it was the lipstick, but I thought the hair from my chair was like clinging onto the lipstick because my lipsticks were and are still covered in hair. I just didn't address it because I was pretty sure it was my fault, which again, wouldn't make sense because I've literally never had that issue at all in this chair ever. It's not like the hair just goes flying off it like it's attached. And then once I watched Rob Beauty Christie's video and she was like, holy crap, there's so much hair. I was like, oh my gosh, that wasn't my hair. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I could not believe that that was actually like hair on the lipsticks. I would have been even more lit in that video if I would have known that it was real freaking hair from the lipstick and not from my chair. I'm gonna take some of the Fenty Beauty liquid liners and I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty Green Neon Palette. Is this called a certain anything? On the packaging, it doesn't specify which, like what the palette name is other than Neon Huda Beauty, but it's the green one. I love this packaging, how amazing is that? So we're probably gonna use some of that and we're gonna use the Fenty's. What should I do? This is like too forest green. I think I actually might layer these two up to try and make a real neon. This is... Lime Fever and Banana Blaze. Actually, I might just do Lime Fever. Oh no, I dropped it. Oh no, one of my eyeshadows broke out, no! <sighs> this is not my day. And I'm gonna top it with the lime green on top of the liquid. 
Oh man. Okay, so I'm gonna do a real intense wing. I'm gonna fast forward through this part because it takes me forever to wing. And then I'm going to top the lime green shadow on top of that just to try and make it a little more neon because this is like more limey, not so neon. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm going to take that lime green matte shadow. I will say the Fenty Beauty liquid liners are like the first thing that I've tried from Fenty that ended up not being the best. When I first watched them, I thought they were really awesome. Now that I've actually used them a few times in looks, it's not that they're not awesome, they're just a little, oh, this isn't the right fucking green. It's not that they're not awesome, it's just that they get a little streaky, which is interesting. I still love to use them because it's hard to find these really bright liquid liners, but I think it works best when you then layer some shadow of the same color on top of it, or close to it, you know? In this way, to top it with a shadow, it kind of locks that liner in anyway. So now I'm gonna take the Fenty Beauty uh, Banana Blaze liquid liner. So I feel kind of bad about being mad at Alok now because he texted me that he's been in meetings all day. So there, and I'm sure he was, he's in meetings like every single day. So I guess there really wasn't maybe the biggest opportunity for him to defend me, but still like your friends suck, sorry. But no, he's, he's upset too now that people got so nasty. Like what about our wedding? Crazy. I'm gonna take this through the crease. Oh gosh, I have such shaky hands. I knew I shouldn't do this. I knew I was gonna ruin it. Oh, it's a shaky mess, no! Should I let that dry a bit more? These also dry a little slow, so if you do if you do use them over the crease or something like this, make sure you don't blink too much because it'll mess everywhere and it just takes a minute to dry. That's cute! Again, not as good as hers, but she's like amazing and this is just inspired by. Um, okay, sorry, I can't look at you guys because I don't want the yellow eyeliner to crease now. I'm going to throw on my mascara and my false lashes and I will be right back. I feel so weird talking and not looking at you. Okay, bye-bye. All right, lashes are on. I am wearing Ardell 811 Faux Mink Lashes. I love these lashes. They just like fan out really beautifully and they're not super expensive. I mean, they're Ardell. So for this, I don't know what to do about the lower lash line. I almost want to keep it more simple because I love the focus being just on the top lash line. This is called Honey Dude. Wouldn't it be the best job to work at ColourPop and just like pick out the names for things? When I visited ColourPop a few months ago, for my uh, swatch party video I did. They were actually like just sitting in a room chilling, naming all of the ColourPop uh, Villains Collection products. And it was just cool because I always wondered like, what does it look like when they're putting this collection together? And it was them just like chilling, hanging out, brainstorming. It looked so fun. I tried to help but none of my names made it. <laughs> Which is understandable because their names are always so, so, so good. And then on our lower lash line, I want to take more of that lime green. Just with a little angle to brush. This is the E65 from Sigma. And I just want to go ahead and smooch that out underneath our waterline. Ooh, a little bit... A little bit of that got in my eyes and it's like super irritating. So be aware of that, please. Oh my gosh, now my eyes are watering. No, I gotta hurry because my lashes always start to come off when my eyes water. I think I'm gonna have to go back in and <laughs> touch up my waterline. Um, now I wanna take some of the highway shade, same little angled brush there, and smoke this out on the outer edge and just tie that into the lime green. Okay, guys, I'm feeling really bad about being in my feelings about the whole bow tie situation. I know it's dumb. I know, but like it's hard to watch people like criticize your taste for your own wedding. Like that's just like, whoa. Especially like sometimes I expect it from like YouTube and really not from you guys. Like the only time anyone says anything offensive is like kind of when they're just like strolling through. They're not a shea butter. They don't know us. They don't know our vibe. And if I ask for you guys' opinion, you guys are always usually really, really kind. There's only just a few people, like I said, who I don't even think are really viewer viewers that sometimes get me in my feelings about stuff. But it's like different when it's like your friends. I don't know, but maybe I was overreacting a bit. I can admit that. This is pretty. All right, so I'm just gonna pop on my mascara on my lower lashes. I'm using uh, Damn Girl by Too Faced, the new mascara, and I'll come back and we'll finish off the face. All right, so I just wanna say something about this mascara. Where the hell did it go? Did I already throw it away? I don't like this. I don't know if mine's bad and it's just like exploding, but this Too Faced Damn Girl mascara is so thick and the wand is so big. Look at this compared to your lower lash line. I mean, it is huge. It's a mess. It is a mess. I had to go in and like clean it up and like scrape off mascara layers with my bad 
Gale Bang Mascara by Benefit. Like this is my lower lash mascara. I mean the wand is just perfect. How anyone uses a big wand on their lower lash I will never understand. These little ones are just perfect. I'll say Benefit for me is just like the queen of mascara. It's unreal. Other than Lancome. My love for Lancome runs deep. Okay let's get into blush. I already have a little bronzer on. I don't think I want to add too much more or else this could get a little crazy. So I haven't used this yet. This is the Tarte Pro Glow and Blush Palette. Super cute. Oh, I like how it folds out. It feels nice. Oh, and it magnets and then it's a mirror back here. That is awesome. That's pretty cool. It's a cute little blush palette, huh? Let's take, actually, I think I want to do this kind of peachy shade right in the middle there. I think that'll be perfect. Cute. It's got a little sheen to it. Looks like the majority of these blushes all have a little sheen. Pretty. And then for highlighter, I'm going to take this one right up here with my Sigma FO3 brush. A little on the nose. I really didn't need much highlighter because that blush had it, but you know, one in Rome, one wearing neon eyeliner. <laughs> yeah, but going back to the Jaclyn Hill thing for a minute, I don't know if I ever finished my thought. I just don't know where she is or what she's doing. I'm sure this is devastating for her and I feel really bad about that, but you know, the ball was in her court. This was kind of her thing and to be just dead silent now just seems like a really weird move when people, I mean, Chris has found metal in her lipstick. How can you be quiet at this point? It's just very strange. Okay, Okay, let's spritz our face. I'm going to use my Smashbox primer water as usual. I'm almost out. Look at that. You guys know I use this in like every video. I have for years. I love it. And then for lips, I have these new L'Oreal Le Macron liquid lipsticks. I'm wondering if this one's going to be too bright. It looks like it could be, but it looks so pretty. This is in the shade 818 Dose of Rose. That's cute. Oh, it might be okay. It's actually not as bright as the packaging is. Is this not a matte? Oh, it says it's matte. Okay, well, we'll see. Oh, that is very opaque. I'm obsessed with this color. I don't think it goes with these eyes at all, but I just want to see what it dries down to. The L'Oreal applicators for lip products might be my favorite. It has such a nice point. You can get a really good shape. I know it's kind of bright. Maybe something more neutral would have been better for this look, but like, I just like it. I feel so neon and I just love that. So that is it for this look, you guys. Again, this is 100% inspired by the beautiful Belle Jordan. This is completely her idea and I take zero, zero credit. I want you guys to always know that. And it's gorgeous. So thank you, Belle Jordan, for creating creating this beautiful look and I hope it's okay that I recreated it today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.